And the marks now, I've done a little bit of everything. I can go back over deciding my light's coming in from this side. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to take in a bit of shading because as I said earlier, this is my favorite pen because although it's a black line, it's going to give me the most interesting color separation when I start to work up some washes leave something to the imagination. That's a little bit stronger. And by making it stronger, I've actually put more ink onto the paper, which means that when I'm doing the wash, I'm going to get a stronger tonal shadow, which will be able to be carried across. So for instance, in here, you've got a little sort of triangular feature like so. Again, don't be too tidy. Let the whole flow of the pen come in quite broadly. There's a lot of shading going to be coming across here because this shadow is much stronger on this side. And before I think about colour or wash or anything, I'll just get the, the bulk of the figures coming through here. Shadows into the ground. There we go. That gives it a little bit more depth of tone and a little bit more excitement too. It's just about ready for a wash now. Okay, here we go. This is the fun zone because the ink is now going to do wonderful, magical things. And I'm keeping to a fairly large brush so that I don't start to fiddle into too many small areas. Already that black line is turning into this delicious purpley wash. What I am doing is making sure I wet most of the line, if not all of the line, because there's one important point to make about these water-soluble pens, that they're water-soluble the first time you add water to them, but after that they become fixed. So therefore, knowing that I want to, I'm way ahead of myself, I'm galloping ahead, knowing that I want to put colour into this, I want to make sure that when I put the colour on later, that the ink will be fixed then. So in a way, I have to go through everything and just fix the colour. So what I'm doing also is deciding on each line which shape is lighter or darker. For instance, here, the outer shape of the building is dark against the sky. It's got nothing to do with colour, it's purely tone value. Therefore I'm pulling this ink into the building side, the shape. Whereas if this was a white building or a very pale building and a very deep blue sky, then in fact I can show you on this side, if this side is light, then what I do is I just release the wash on that side to give the effect of light against dark on one side and dark against light on the other. Instead of diving straight into the painting, work it out in pen first. You get the movement, the spontaneity, the excitement of the subject, and you work out all the tone values at the same time. A couple more things before we finish that although the painting's finished now, I'm going to go back with the pen and just pull together some of the lines and it might just help to pull the whole thing together. That one, for instance, there went slightly fuzzy, so I'm going to just pull that back in again. Um, one or two others going in various directions. Because they come right across. I'm not trying to be too specific with these, but it just gives you the feeling that there's lots of ropes pulling across the whole scene. And a final one, in fact, with white, going back to how the, the tip hex is useful, uh, which I'm going to put in from here and take right across. Again, not too many, just a few. And that gives it the finishing touch. Now I can take off the tape and, like I work in the sketchbooks, get this rather nice little picture area that's all tidied up with neat edges. 
when you do two or three on the same page of the sketchbook, it looks really good. And then, of course, you've got a little bit of space to write down where they are. And that's it, finished.